Hello, this is Stephen and Jennifer with Iowa Backyard Farmer, and today we want to talk about peppers. We have a lot. We're growing. How many did you count up? 60, 61 about, peppers? About 62 different pepper varieties this year. And that, that's certainly up from where we've been in the years past. But uh, we're... And, and to be fair, we don't grow them just for ourselves. We do a big plant sale in the spring. And so we're growing for a wide variety of different tastes and, and ideas. And so they're this list is not something that everyone needs to grow because there's choices. Yep, there, there are a lot, a lot of lot options of out there. And so today, I just want to go through, or let's go through from kind of like the sweetest stuff into the savory and the more spicy ones. And we do a lot of testing here at home as well. So the vast majority of what we are going to talk about today, we have grown. Uh, over the years, we've grown stuff. We've taken stuff off the list that either meets our, our criteria or it doesn't. And so, and we're growing it from seed. So we order all these seeds in, and we're growing them from seed. And so some of our judgment is clouded by how hard was it to get going. We're not buying these in starts. We're starting these ourselves. Yeah. So let's start it, get started with the sweet peppers, and maybe start with the smaller ones, the snacking type, mm -hmm. um, the delicious ones that everybody just likes to grab and snack and go. Yeah, I like at Sam's Club you get the little bag of sweet snacking peppers. So. Yeah, so, pretty, so, so in those, when you get those little snacking peppers, there's a lot of times they'll say lunchbox peppers on them. That's actually the variety series. There's, there's the, the lunchbox series, there's red, yellow, and orange. And we have those on our list of plants that we recommend to grow this year as well. I do. Um, I will note that the red lunchbox grows a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. It's not as big of a pepper as the other colors. Yeah, but they're delicious. Uh, we've tried to replace these because they're a little bit of an older series. Um, but they've been really hard to replace. They're not very seedy, so they're nice if you're going to fill them with something. They, they taste fine and they grow fine, so we've got these. But if you're looking for something that I like even a little bit better, um, yummy and what's my other one? Just sweet. Yeah, just, just sweet. Just sweet are in that yellow-orange category, and they're just a little bit sweeter, just a little bit nicer. I like those. Yeah, if I had to, had to pick from uh, all the different little uh, snacking peppers, those are the two that I would pick as well. A little bit sweeter. Um, another one that we do have on the list is a, a called Cupid. It's a little mini red bell pepper, about yeah, so yay big. The other snacking peppers are kind of a longer, pointier shape. The the Cupid mini bell is literally like a little, a little tiny mini round bell. bell pepper. It's, yeah. it's adorable. Yeah, and so it's that cute. one's good. It's, it's particularly good if you let it get all the way ripe. If you pick it green, eh, it's it's not the the sweet snacking one that you'd want to go with. But if you wait for it it's to get all the way red, better red. It, it's pretty good. And we're going to try a new one this year um, that I'm calling a, a snacking pepper called Candy Cane Red. Now and it has stripes. And it has stripes. There's has a Candy stripes. Cane Red. There's a Candy Cane Chocolate. This year we're we're growing both. We only have the, the red one on our list this year. And it's a little bigger in that snacking thing. It's going to be just a little bit bigger than most of those snackers. Yeah. But everything that we've heard, all the reviews, everybody that we've talked to said they've really liked those. Uh, market gardeners who sell it like farmer's markets have been really pleased and have, have good good year, you know, week after week sales of, of those. Yeah, because so, they're, they're supposed to be very to sweet those. and they've got a cool color thing to it. I, I'm a sucker for stripes. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> so looking forward to giving that one a try. So moving on to something probably everybody is familiar with, the bell pepper group. And we've got a whole page of bell peppers that we are offering this year that we are trying. We've, we've tried some, we've taken some off the list again. Um, but, you know, what are we growing this year? Uh, we've got a couple of heirlooms that we've grown forever that seem to work pretty well. Uh, California Wonders, a standard. Yeah, I think that's a 1928 variety. It does particularly well um, in a cooler summer. Uh, so of your two greens, one favors the heat, one favors the... And, and I almost, almost put that one kind of in the middle category. Yeah. Where we've got an Emerald Giant. Is a, is a green bell pepper. It'll mature red, but it uh, stays green a long time. Um, that one favors the heat. Yeah. And on, also on the bell pepper side, another one that matures to red is the king of the north. And that one favors, favors, the, favors colder the colder weather. weather. So, can you, so you kind of got to gamble. Are we going to have a really hot <laughs> summer? Are we going to have a kind of, you know, because we're kind of, you know. Yeah. They have both done really well. And from the greenhouse perspective, all of those grow really well. The only one I haven't tried is our purple one that's new to us this year, which is called Dragonfly. What are you telling me about Dragonfly? Yeah, Dragonfly is our first purple pepper that we've offered um, on our for sale list. 
Uh, there's been purple bell peppers for a lot of years. They have a kind of a, a tradition of being a little thinner, thinner walled. Maybe not quite they as good. Historically, maybe, been maybe they've they've had <laughs> issues, and so they, they haven't really met our criteria for offering them for sale. But this year, Dragonfly is a new one, and it's uh, an AAS winner. Yeah, just from twenty two, yeah, so, it's, so it's it's fairly new. It's a fairly new one. I'm excited about that. Um, gourmet on that list is the orange one, and that one's fantastic. I love that one, and um, the greens and reds have just both of them do really well. The Emerald Giant is a little bigger. Yeah, it's a bigger for pepper. one that is likely to it, it'll stay green fairly long. Um, other ones that we have tried this year or, or trying this year. So uh, we are trying another new one this year okay. that's bright yellow. Um, it's called Early Sensation. It is an earlier maturing yellow. Um, we've had yellow ones in the past where um, they start yellow. And, they look a little orangey. and then they, they look pretty orangey before too yeah. long. And so like we've been trying looking to get for the full color so you could have a rainbow of bell peppers and have all the colors. Yeah. So I heard really good things about the early sensation. So as a, if you're looking for a bright yellow one, that's the one we recommend. And as far as just a, a big, a newer uh, um, red one, uh, Red Knight is one that we've offered for several yeah, years. It, we've grown that. It's, if it I had grows to well. It just produces one, well. It tastes good. It it's, works. It, it, it works really works. Really, really well. Because some of these that turn red, they take so long to get red that by the time you get a red pepper, everybody else has eaten it already, and it's not fantastic. This one I can get red all the way red it turn, and enjoy it. Turns red <laughs> fast, and it's it's big and just a beautiful plant. Yeah. So uh, red night, one that we've absolutely loved. All that said, if I was to group the bell peppers in general, I would say they're kind of boring. They are. They're they just good. taste like they're, bell peppers. They're, they're good for stuffing. They taste like a bell pepper. <laughs> they're good. If you want to move to something even a little bit sweeter, I actually like generally the Italian types even yeah, better. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. My so my favorite of all the peppers is uh, sweet peppers is in this category too. I have I have two. I like Carmen, which is the red one, and it's just brilliant red. It's long, like I don't know, seven inches. Yeah, I mean, six, seven, eight inches. It's a nice long, and it's super sweet, and golden Big Daddy, which is even bigger, and just as sweet. And when I get those, I mean, I've got my whole sink full of peppers. We're doing things. That's the one I'm going to eat. Yeah. That one's delicious. And golden Big Daddy has been one we've grown that for probably a decade now, and it's it has just been a classic for us. It. Um, it takes a while. It, it takes a little while, but it, I'd say it has the best flavor. It's a long, like, 10 inch one. We've nice had some walls. that are 12 inches long. So, yeah, super thick walls, uh, delicious right off the plant, uh, delicious smoked, delicious fried. You can do pretty much anything yeah, with that I one. I really like that one. And um, Costa Rican sweet, we've grown ever since we've been doing plants too. That's in that Marconi type it's, tomato. It's not as red as Carmen, but um, it's, it, it can mature as red as Carmen. Right, but I pick it before but, it's red. But we seem to pick it when it's a little <laughs> bit more orange just because we're. Uh, we don't have quite the patience that oh, yeah. we should on those, but uh, it's uh, delicious, even orange, yeah, -ish. orange reddish. So other ones in this, uh, you know, sweet but not necessarily a bell pepper. One is actually kind of a bell pepper. The the orange blaze is yeah, technically so, a bell pepper, but it's long and skinny, and so most people look at it and say that's not a bell pepper because it's not blocky. That's a it's a elongated bell, it, it, yeah. and it's delicious. <laughs> I, that we've grown that one for years too. That yeah, it's really been good. one of our favorites, and so. Uh, another one that is I'm trying to decide, is this a snacking pepper? Is it just a, a general sweet pepper? Is lipstick? It's mostly sweet. <laughs> it's, say it's mostly sweet. It's it mostly is, sweet. It's a... also really, really thick walled of these, of these peppers. That's going to be a really thick one. It's really good for like roasting or like if you're going to make a red pepper soup or something. It's not always sweet. Every once in a while it'll surprise you. But generally, we do eat a lot of those just out in the garden. And so it's not the sweetest of the bunch. But it's still pretty good. It's still pretty good. And we want to try something new this year. Yeah. And I'll let you attempt to pronounce it because um, I have no idea. How it's to kind of, it. it's like a triangle shaped. It's really fat at the top pointed Leisha. That's how I'm going to say that. So um, it's, it's L-E-Y-S-A. You can call it Leisha. I call it Lesia. Uh, Less, yeah, I, I don't know. Sure. If somebody knows how to pronounce it, let us know. <laughs> but that's also got really, really thick walls. It's supposed to be really, really sweet. Um, it does take a little bit longer to mature to that red color, so we'll see um, how we get them. But the reports are that that's really productive, really sweet, a really thick walled um, pepper, and I'm excited to try that one this year. Yeah, and a lot of people have said, yeah, once you try this, you'll never grow a bell pepper again. So we will see. I'm looking forward to that one. It's 
it, uh, the Until history. Until it comes in all the colors. I'm going to keep growing my That's bell true. peppers because I like all the different <laughs> colors. So this one but, matures um, a nice, beautiful red, and it tastes best when it is red. But it does take a lot longer than some of our other ones, so yeah. you have to count that in. Yeah, historically, that one comes from the Ukraine region yeah. of the world. So, so that is really it for our sweet, sweet peppers. We've got some others that have no heat, but they're they're maybe more on the savory side of things. That's and, fair. And so, one that we are adding to our list this year that I'm trying to decide: well, is this a sweet pepper? Is this a savory pepper? Is one called Jimmy Nardello? It's a frying pepper, and, and it's, it's it's got a thinner skin. It, it's generally more considered a frying pepper, but a lot of people say, "Well, it, it's sweet enough; we just eat it straight off the vine, and they like it anyway." It's so. not it's not going to bite you back. It's so. going to be great. It's going to have, and as you get to these other peppers, you get a. Uh, I don't say more flavor. It's like, yeah, I don't know how to it's a little more complex flavor. Yeah, it's not and, just juicy, crunchy water. <laughs> and, and and Jimmy Nardello is one of those where everybody describes it a little bit different, but everybody seems to list it as their top one or two. Yeah, it's always on everybody's every top year. list. And this is on the slow food arc of taste thing because it's got. It's got that tremendous flavor, which I haven't tasted, but I've heard of good things. So yeah. we're going to try it. Yep. And so if you're looking for a good heirloom uh, brought over from Italy in 1887, there's a really good story behind it. Uh, easy to look that up. But uh, yeah, good heritage. And you compare heirloom that one, maybe or, like the shishitos. You'd put that in the same category of usefulness as the shishitos. Yeah, I think that's how I would best describe how I would use it is, is uh, you know, you could eat it fresh, uh, really not m much heat. But uh, it's you know, kind of really it, shine, kind of yeah. you know, blister it a little bit, and it'll be just fine. So moving on to those that are maybe have a little bit of a heat. I don't know if you call them heat; they're really mild. But they're but they're they're, they're not sweet. They're more of more of the, the savory <laughs> yeah. kind. We got a couple. Ahis so the that we're ahi peppers are from Peru, from South America, and they're they're very popular. And ahi mojo is a new one that we're trying this year. It is the longest one, I think, of the ahis that we have. It ripens red. And um, it's going to be really citrusy. All those ahis are really citrusy and sweet, crunchy. They're a little thinner walled, but they've got just a little bit of zing to them. Yeah. And I, they're really delicious. Yeah. So we're, we're trying the, the mojo for the first time this year. Ahi rico is one that we've grown for several years. And we, we brought that one in when, when I discovered that you can actually make paprika, paprika so with it. We smoke these, dry them, grind them up for paprika, and they're like my secret ingredient in everything I cook. And people will say, well, why does this taste better than mine? I'm like, <laughs> secret ingredient. <laughs> <laughs> secret ingredient. Secret ingredient and so it's going to be very similar <laughs> to the mojo. If you wanted the, the heirloom variety, that, that would be the mojo. But it is going to take longer, the ahi rico is also red, but it's gonna be way shorter to ripen to red. Yeah, and, and both of them, the ahi, the family, or not, is it the species um, that the ahis are in, those plants can get quite a bit bigger. So most yeah, you peppers, you can, you, can, you can get away without any kind of support. Some of them are just short in general, but these are kind of big floppy the, 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 things. They'll, they'll get big and floppy. But they'll have a lot of fruit on them too, yeah. which is fantastic. And it's it's been by far one of our favorites. And, yeah. and, and if you've never made paprika before, just making it's kind of fun. Yeah, we have a video on that. It's not that hard. And I was surprised how good that is. Yeah. So next one up, uh, Anaheim. Tell us how you like to use our Anaheims. In everything. The, <laughs> so if you're from New Mexico, you're going to be biased. This is a Hatch Chili, only not from Hatch, New Mexico, because we're not there. We're in Iowa. So we're growing an <laughs> Anaheim Chili. And if you bought the little green tins of green chilies, this is that that pepper, we roast these and I have canned them. I freeze them, I make green chili sauce. We put the green chili sauce in everything. We smoke them and dry them. I make like a, a pepper powder and this is one of those flavor ingredients. I mean, you just, everything, everything could use this pepper. It's my favorite. And Charger, mm -hmm. I think is the one variety we have. It doesn't take too long, it's very productive. I like it a lot. Uh, it's been been really good for us. We've we've tried a lot of different ones, and most of them work really well. Uh, Charger seems to have worked the best for, for our environment here yeah. in Central Iowa. So, next one that you like to use anchos. Which, ancho uh, poblano. So it's an ancho when it's green. It's a poblano when it's dried. Or I uh, just switch that. Switch that way. <laughs> Whatever's the right way. I'll put it up there. Um, and they're really good. Again, I'm gonna put these. I put these if if I like dehydrate the the bells the anaheim and the ancho 
all together and then you put that in your eggs you put that in your soup you put that on your potatoes and it's fantastic flavor for everything um it's really good it's a staple of mexican cooking um is that what you would typically make chili rellenos out of yeah so yeah so if you like that kind of cooking they're fabulous the, 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 the entre poblano is the way to go they're, they're not spicy but their flavor is just really good yeah. it's got really good pepper flavor and we we've tried a lot of different varieties barren is one that we will be growing this year um it's nice and big it, it's it a nice really big good. one early maturing it's it just worked really well for us over the years so that's one that we're yeah. still offering you can get just a touch of heat on it but yeah if you keep it well watered you probably won't <laughs> nothing to blow you away yep and then you added the next one. This so, is one from here. Yeah, sort of. so this is one that we added this year. I, I'm going to butcher the name. I'll call it Ocilio Thin Skin Italian. And we've had a customer who's bought plants from us probably three years in a row who has specifically asked for this one. And then I'd meant, so I didn't write it down, and so I'd always forget. forget the name. And this year I wrote it down <laughs> and, and pulled it in. So that one um, comes from uh, Italy as well. It was brought over here to the Des Moines area. And um, and they donated it to the Seed Savers Exchange, didn't they? Or yeah. They donated it, the seed to it. Yeah. The family did. And so you have, it's a blocky, I would, I would call it like a wrinkly bell pepper. <laughs> it's like, what it looks like, okay. yeah. Um, but um, it's supposed to be, again, a good. It, it's, so it's mild heat. Um, but uh, it's been requested so many times I thought we would bring that, that in and try it out. Try so it out. if you're, you're into trying new things, that's one that I've been told is a, a real winner. Real fabulous. So, so give okay. that one a try. Uh, then we go on to something a little bit tinier. Oh, these are teeny, the little Bequino yellows. I'm still looking for reds. I don't know if I talked you into the reds yet, so but this is we, a Brazilian pepper. We ordered pepper. some reds. Okay. They're not on the list yet. Well, we might we, have reds We too. will have them. <laughs> uh, Brazilian pepper, you would serve this pickled and make a nice fiery little... Food. I, I like them. They're citrusy as well. You bite them and you're like, well, oh, that's really awesome. Sweet. And then it bites you back. And, <laughs> and other names would be like Little Beak. It's got a pointed little end or Sweaty Drops because they, <laughs> they hit you. But it's, it's, not, um, it's not overpowering. It's just kind of like, whew, that was spicy. And then you're like, oh, but it was good. Let's try another one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Another one that we, we, are, have, we have on our list this year is a, a Fresno pepper called Flaming Flare. And if you've never tried a Fresno pepper before, it looks kind of like a, a jalapeno. jalapeno. Yeah. It's a little thinner skin. How would you use that one? Well, you could use it in a salsa or again, I would dry it or you could use it for all the things that you use for peppers. You could maybe stuff it. I don't know. It's, it's nice because you get that little citrusy flavor. Yeah. And, and Flaming Flares, it was a 2015 AAS winner and Certainly not as popular as the jalapenos, but, well, they're, but we, they're, we they're, do sell quite if, a bit of them. If you wanted a similar heat to a jalapeno, but a red color, because sometimes you let the jalapenos go red and then they're like flaming death peppers. But um, <laughs> this is a nice red pepper with kind of a comparable heat to a jalapeno. Yeah. And the last one here on our, our really mild page is um, a, a hot cherry. And I know you can get hot cherries from anywhere to almost sweet to flaming death with names that I wouldn't even want to put on a video. Uh, this year we're going with one called Time Bomb. It's uh, fairly mild. Um, yeah, very mild. It's a thousand Scoville units, so it's not it's not going to knock your socks off. But you could stuff this or do all sorts of things with it, and it would be really good or pickle it or something. That would be fantastic. Yeah. Yep. And I guess continuing on on the mild pepper side of things, we actually brought in some jalapenos that are a more mild type, and they've been very popular. And we, we yeah. really liked them. They've grown yeah. really well, too. So we grow all these, and we sample these, and we try them. And then I'm, I'm doing a lot of production in, in the kitchen with them. And I really like the jalapeno trick you because it doesn't have any heat, but it's got pretty good jalapeno flavor. And I was like, oh, this is really good. But you have to be able to sort your jalapenos <laughs> if you if you don't because i made cowboy candy which is a great thing to make with jalapenos but i didn't sort it and so i'm like oh, these are fabulous i'm eating them along like they're candy right and then every once in a while woo, i got one of the super hot ones and it didn't i thought they'd mellow each other out nope it did not happen <laughs> jalapenos are jalapeno they don't they don't trade flavors <laughs> they so. don't trade flavors but um the trick to you is nice it doesn't have any heat but it's got a better flavor a lot of people grow a not a pino this has better flavor 
yeah. then a knot of pannier does the trick to you. Yeah. And then a, a more mild one, so it has a little bit of heat, is tam mild jalapeno. And use it like you would anywhere else you'd use a jalapeno. It's just nowhere near the heat of some of the others, but it has some heat uh, compared to tricky, which doesn't have any. Yeah. And so we'll leave the other jalapenos for yeah, we'll, later. We'll, we'll, they, we'll get to those. There's our, a, there's our list a, is sorted by heat. By heat. <laughs> so we'll go up in heat. So those are the very mildest ones. And then another sort of fake out one, the habanero roulette. And um, again, you have a different varieties in this category. So you have a habanado, sort of like you had a nata pino. Yeah. The habanero roulette, I like the flavor of better. It tastes really fruity. I mean, it looks kind of scary, and you're like, <laughs> oh, what is this thing? But actually, it was really, yeah. it was really it was pretty surprisingly, tasty. Surprisingly tasty. That does kind of freak you out because if you're thinking you're going to get the heat of a regular habanero, it's. I'm very slow to nibble to make yeah, sure that so, I, I didn't uh, accidentally switch plants up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when I plant everything together, I can put my not spicy things far away uh, just so I can tell them apart. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so we're bringing in some other new ones in. So we've got a daughter who spent a little bit of time in Mexico. She's now down in El Paso. And so we're, we're experimenting with a lot of um, new recipes that are, I'll call it more authentic um, Mexican food. And, so... and I'm like, and I can't get the peppers, so I'm going to grow them. So pasilla or chalaca when it's dry um, is a nice long green one. It, uh, pasilla in Spanish would be like raisin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's got a little raisin. It's got so. a, a sweet. Kind of a little bit of an earthy flavor. Yeah. Or, or cocoa or something. It's really very delicious. And so I buy the dry peppers, but shipping them to here, sometimes my quality is not so good. And so I'm like, I can do this. I can grow these and make my own and they'll be more fabulous. So that's what we're doing with those. You could use those in like moles or sauces or seasonings. They're really good. Mostly you're going to use that one dried mm -hmm. um, in its dried form. Yeah. So so that's more on the mild side of things for new ones that we were trying. Yeah. Again, you're like 1,000 Scoville units probably. Yeah. Um, it's not hot, but it's going to add tremendous flavor to any of your sauces. You're making enchilada sauce or... All the things. Yeah, yeah. it's delicious. Mm -hmm. it's my, maybe, my favorite Maybe flavors. you'll make some videos of, of making food from authentic peppers. <laughs> yeah. Well, so. or fresh, fresh, <laughs> fresh ones. Yeah. Sometimes we get them. Um, switching gears again, we're going to go <laughs> Greek. Yeah, so let's go, go across the ocean. So pepperoncini is one that we've carried for a number of years. There's a Greek type. There's an Italian type. We've got Greek listed on our list, but we do have Italians that will be growing as well. So if anybody wants those, let us know that. Now they're slightly different. What's your difference? Do you remember? Um. They're, they're about the same heat. Uh, really, it's the shape, and, the, the size, and the, the color at maturity is the biggest thing. The, the Greek one will turn more of a golden yellow. Uh, the Italian one's more of a reddish color. Okay. So, but sometimes people do specifically ask for one or the other. So if you're just looking for a general pepperoncini, it's most likely the Greek kind. That, you, that that's you'll more get. common, yeah. And if you buy, what is it, Papa John's pizzas, and they have the little green pepper sitting in there, that's a, a Greek pepperoncini. Yep. Okay, let's switch continents again and go to Shishido. <laughs> <laughs> shishido, kind Peppers of. Peppers are very popular. Try Asian, them all. <laughs> Asian type. So if you've never tried Shishidos, you should try them. It is uh, it quickly becoming one of the more popular um, chefy chef type <laughs> things, of things. Yeah. I feel chefy. And, and this year we're, we're, we're trying the Mellow Star variety. Yeah, we've grown yeah. Shishidos for a long time, but this is a variety change for us. For yeah whatever reason it was going to be better. Yeah, so a lot of people like to just pan fry these, throw a little bit of olive oil or something in, just blister them a little bit, eat them straight off the pan. Uh, Again, fabulous. not really any heat, but fantastic flavor. Fantastic yep. flavor. Uh, and then one of my favorites coming up is the Sweet Banana Goddess. This is a, a long, beautiful variety of a banana pepper. It, it turns a beautiful color. It's very productive. You can use it red or when it's mature or yellow. Uh, it has just a little bit of heat, but not much. You can make like those little banana rings you get at Subway. You can mm -hmm. um, do all sorts of things with those. You pickle them a lot. Yeah, so those ones are delicious. And and in terms of productivity, we've got areas of our garden that are maybe a little shaded. They're just not ideal. And we'll have some pepper varieties that obviously are not, not happy in that environment. <laughs> complain about and it. And then we've got our goddess yellow banana peppers are just, like, just like, I will produce no I matter what. I will crank what. it out. So they're, they're very nice. If you want a banana variety, that's that's my pick. Yeah. Um, 
We've got a couple here that we are trying to, that's a little bit hotter than what we've been covering, but there are ones we're going to use in container. Yeah, so um, the pot of pino is going to be a jalapeno for a pot, and it's going to be more of a, a bush type jalapeno, so it's going to be compact if you're growing in a small space. Um, you can do that. It's going to be a little earlier than some of our other varieties. Those great big, we'll cover the Goliath jalapeno later. A bigger pepper generally takes a little bit longer to mature, so um, this yeah. would be a great one for a small space. Yeah, so small space, or if you want to hang it in a container, you know, a hanging pot, basically, uh, that's a really good option. We also are trying one, again, kind of switching this is, this continents. Is, this is probably more <laughs> ornamental than culinary. This is my one... <laughs> one pick just because it's pretty is the Bolivian rainbow pepper. And so you can get yellow and purple and orange and, and it kind of goes through this whole thing and they're just beautiful. <laughs> yeah. And, and as far as eating, so you can still eat them. There's probably others that maybe be a better choice. They have the flavor very similar to any green bell pepper, um, but the heat kind of like a serrano. So, um, so, so, so they're, certainly, they're, they're certainly, <laughs> certainly edible. A little um, spicy, but a little, a little, fiery. little spicy. If you're thinking green bell, but they pepper. look like little Christmas lights, yeah. you know, because they they stand up. So some peppers hang down. These peppers are gonna poke up, and they look pretty. And yeah. So it's ornamental. Yep. Okay, and then you added another new one on request. This is a black Hungarian, and um, what? Tell me about black. Uh, yeah. Hungarian. So this one, when we put out a a, a uh, request for, hey, is there anything that you don't see on our list you would like us to try? So this is one we haven't grown in our garden. Uh, but anytime we get those requests, we look through all the reviews from all the sites that we possibly can find. And Black Hungarian has a lot of very positive reviews. It looks a lot like a black jalapeno. It looks like it's going to scare you to death. Like this is going to be like one of those scary hot peppers. Yeah. That's <laughs> what so it looks like. <laughs> it, it's generally a little bit milder than most jalapenos. So yeah. um, pretty similar category. Uh, but I kind of laugh at some of the descriptions, um, you know, Looks like it's going to burn your face off, uh, but has an amazing balance of spice and sweetness to it. So still very edible. Um, yeah. Very delicious. We're going to give it a try. Give it a try. Give Absolutely. It a try. Um, and then another one, I'm, I'm all into my peppers for later. <laughs> so <laughs> amazing cayenne, cayenne pepper. You can make your own cayenne pepper powder. I'm excited. Yeah. We've done that several times. I've done it with like, combined it with the yellow and the red and you come up with, you know, you can play around yeah. with it. But this one has a nice... Um, thin wall, so it's good for drying. So, I'm trying to remember, is the thin or thicker wall? This one I would call more of a thicker wall, okay. so that you can, get more, you, you can get more, more uh, have... powder out of it. Yeah. And Cay Amazing, too, is one of the, the milder ones. And so, if you like the flavor of cayenne, but you're thinking, man, I don't want to burn my face off with some of the others, this is the mildest of the ones that we offer. And we've grown it several years, and, and, like and I've always really liked yeah. it. Um, moving back to the story of our daughter down in Mexico, now El Paso, going to try something else new. Uh, Guajillo chilies um, is the dried version, and you can buy those in any shop. But I was like, but I can make better <laughs> from my fresh peppers. Um, but Mirasol peppers would be what they are green, and they are beautiful. They're red, they're pointy, but they, again, grow up. Oh, really? Yeah, Mirasol, <laughs> so it looks at the sun, right? Oh, okay. Um and um, and they're beautiful. The flavor of that, again, dried, is one of my favorite things. So we're going to grow them. Yep. And you can try it too if you want. Yep. So we will have those. Uh, coming back to one that we've carried for a long time is a Hungarian hot wax. Yeah, which it, I advise you to not plant by your banana pepper because they do look similar. It looks very similar. similar. <laughs> so uh, it keep does them not apart. Taste similar. <laughs> they do not taste they're, the same. Uh, they're significantly hotter. <laughs> yeah, that's very hot. It um, goes from green to yellow to red. Um, they're very common in salsas uh, to use them make salsas and things they're very delicious you could roast it you could do all sorts of things with that it's got good flavor and a nice heat it's it's yeah. a nice moderate heat it's not gonna burn your your <laughs> tongue off mostly but um yeah so it, unless it, you're surprised it's a good one classic one that we've we've had for a lot of years then we move into a, a group of jalapenos uh, we added one this year uh, but one that we've had for a long time is just the early jalapeno. It's the classic heirloom that's been around for a long time. And that's going to be, of the jalapenos, that's going to be your smallest one yeah. that we carry. So the early jalapeno, its claim to fame was we ripen earlier than everybody else, but it's also a smallish smaller one. jalapeno. And it, and it checks really, you know, the little lines or cracks as it's maturing, it cracks fairly easily. But 
If you want an old heirloom one, that's an amazing one, and, and a lot of people like that one. Yeah, it works. And, and one that we've carried for a few years, which is a little bit bigger, doesn't check near as much, is called Jedi. And we've been super happy yeah, with that. I really like the Jedi one. They're about the same heat. I'm going to say these are about all yeah. the same heat. Um, and then Goliath, which is even... So Goliath, we brought this one in for the first bigger. time this year. Uh, we've had several people say, I really want a bigger jalapeno that you can use for stuffing, something like that. And we brought in Goliath because it is a little bit longer can can get up to about five inches long and, you know, one and a half to two inches wide at the shoulders. So... Just a great big jalapeno. And a great big nice jalapeno. And, um, and they're all about the same heat. These are all yeah. nice jalapeno level heat. <laughs> yep. And for a lot of us, that's about as hot as most of us want to go. We're going to go hotter. But, but, but we do realize that there's a lot of people who like even hotter ones. And I mentioned that uh, cayenne peppers have a variety of heats. So we brought in one that was more mild. That was the amazing, amazing too, too that we talked about. We which also is really have, good for drying. have red ember, which is is a little bit hotter yep. and it's a little bit thinner skin, um, but uh, it's grown really well for and us. And it's still, I, I would say on the mild side for, yeah, for overall, cayennes, this is not gonna, I mean, we're, okay, we've moved like your, your anchos and some of your mild ones are a thousand, maybe 3,000, up to maybe 5,000 Scoville units. And, your cayennes and, are and, jumping up. This is like gonna be 15, 20,000 Scoville a typical, units jalapeno that we just covered i'll say is five to eight thousand scoville heat units yeah and so this will be twice as hot which yeah, i don't know that notch. you can tell any difference after you get past that but some people can so yeah. so this is good flavor you're not going to use it in the same quantity that you would use a jalapeno <laughs> yeah so back to uh authentic mexican food I, I it's my thing this year if you want to try this this is your year i might grow them again <laughs> this might be a one and done <laughs> but chile de arbol is a small thin kind of looks like a cayenne chili um and again it will be used dried in sauces and things and to really um add some spice to your sauces and things um yeah i kind of laugh at this one because chili de arbol is translated as little tree or no tree chili tree chili and some people call it i'm looking at my list here rat's tail bird's beak well, there's all, they're, they're there's just, all sorts of funky skinny, little names for that long one. skinny chilies mostly used dried in sauces to add heat and they're really good at that yep so we mentioned earlier we had a a a, hel or a, a habanero with no heat now we've got a habanero that's milder heat relatively relatively speaking can, still, can, compared to where habaneros can get to okay it's a habanero with cayenne level heat how yeah would you say that yeah so burning bush is is the habanero that we've had for several years it's an orange one and for a habanero, pretty mild heat. It's, uh, it's pretty. And the habaneros have a really fruity flavor to them that everybody, in, well, not everybody enjoys. Yeah. <laughs> Without the heat, everybody kind of likes those fruity undertones. You can take her the yeah. heat or whatever. But it, this one doesn't take too long to mature because those hotter peppers, I have them growing now because they take a while. They, they are not as fast to mature as some of your other plants. Yeah. But this one... Um, this one's not too bad. This one's not too bad. But uh, yeah, so we're here, we are at the end of January and we have most of our habaneros already growing underneath the lights downstairs. Barely, barely. They're, yeah. they're coming up. So fish pepper. Tell us what we we uh, we brought that one in a couple of years ago. It's kind of a fun one. It's fun. So remember we talked about candy cane being a sweet stripey thing. This is a spicy stripey <laughs> thing. And um, this was classic, I would say... Where New England? So Chesapeake it was, Bay. Um, yeah, Chesapeake Bay. Really, it kind of developed around the the fishing industry, didn't it? Something like that. So yeah. a lot of people say it's perfect f when it's mixed with you know the, the right seafood dishes. Beyond that, unless you're really well, using it for the, seafood. The idea was because it's striped and and peppers are milder before they're ripe. So um, it, when it starts out, it's kind of a green and creamy color striping. And so if you were making like a white sauce that goes really well with fish, but you didn't want big chunks in it that looked like they stand <laughs> out, you could use this, this lighter stripey color thing, get really good flavor and not ruin your white sauce, which is really good. They get a little very much fiery as they, as they ripen mm -hmm. and they're not as big as I thought. So you'll see pictures of them on online and I thought, oh, they're going to be like peppers, but they're, they're little, yeah, they're, they're they're really smaller small. peppers. They're like three inches 
long is all. Yeah, and some people just grow them as as an ornamental because they're pretty. And the, and the, the foliage is what yeah. variegated. So you have variegated foliage and you have striped fruit, and it's really very pretty. Um, and they're they're a little spicy. So you can yeah. get up to, like I said, the the green color is a little spicy with the thing. If you let it ripen all the way to red, you're looking yeah, at um, fifty thousand Scoville units. There's so. thirty thousand. So it kind of ranges from the green five thousand all the way right around thirty thousand yeah. or so. So next one on our list is ahi. It's another one of the ahis, but this one has more heat. So this one is called lemon drop, and lemon drop is a very popular one in Peru. So I think this is the the Peruvian. They're, they're, they're <laughs> say, depending on where you're depending at, where there, you're there's at. a couple of ahis, and we'll get to even hotter ones here in oh, just yeah. a minute. So we got lemon drop and amarillo mm, is coming up. That's the one. And uh, both of them are extremely popular in Peru. So if you like Peruvian cuisine, well, even is, if you don't, this is this one is, you need. You got this. You got the. <laughs> sort of lemony citrusy flavor you got the ahis have that nice little thing to it and then this is going to have quite a bit of um thing to it, <laughs> it yeah it's got got some heat little, 15 little. to 30,000 yeah, so. scoville heat units uh, next one on our list is a santa another santa fe pepper um i don't know this is the first santa fe yeah pepper. we did the, it was the uh, uh, fresno is fresno, what i was thinking yeah. of before so santa fe this one's called havasu and this is one that we're bringing in because it just looked interesting. We've never tried this one before. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, variation within the the uh, the Santa Fe class of peppers, and so this one basically, uh, my, the description that caught my attention is if you like chili rellenos with a little more heat, this is a really good pepper to try for that. So like an ancho, but with it's kind of like an ancho with, 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 with a little more <laughs> yeah. with more heat to it, yeah. So it's commonly stuffed just like you would with an ancho poblano. Okay. So, and then serrano. Serrano. And this is really good. If you're making a fresh salsa and you want just a nice clean heat, we're going to use a serrano and it's going to be fantastic. And yeah, and a, a serrano, if you've never had one, I'd call it a cousin of jalapeno. It's a little bit narrower. A uh, similar flavor. A, well, a it's little... not as it's not as veg vegetal as a jalapeno. I feel like a jalapeno tastes more like almost a bell pepper with heat. You've got kind of a I don't know how to describe that. A serrano is going to be a little. Well, it's I, one way I would describe it is is almost the texture. As a jalapeno gets ripe, it can get I don't want to say mushy, but it's spongy. It's, it's spongy. It gets a little bit softer. If you like the crispness of of a something that you can crunch into like the ahis sort of uh, even more so they're, oh, yeah. they're a little bit more crunchy um anyway if you haven't tried one but like a little bit more heat that's a it's a fun one to try we have altiplano on our list this year um we, we've had some other heirloom ones in the past uh the the altiplanos are considerably bigger and they're and earlier to probably, harvest and yeah, stuff. And they're probably a little bit milder than yeah. the others Yep, so moving up in heat, now we're going to move to another ahi, ahi amarillo, or am amarillo. Amarillo. I'm going to butcher the names on some of these, so. <laughs> <It's all right. laughs> so another it's not a test. <laughs> another staple of the Peruvian cuisines, just a bit hotter. So this one's 30 to 50,000. Lemon drop was not quite this hot. Um, this one, it's, you know, amarillo is yellow and spanish but it ripens more of an orangey color and and you're gonna get again that super citrusy flavor i think the description said even berry like you're you've got that really kind of fruity undertone yeah and then you get that nice little sizzle in there and um i, so, I kind of am a fan so we've had we've had fan. people requesting that one over the last couple of years and and finally decided that that's up our our ahi uh, list because we, we've enjoyed the ones that we've tried so yeah they're fantastic bringing in the they're amarillo fantastic. Um, and then maybe we'll jump down to one more ahi before we jump to some of the others that are hotter so another ahi is sugar rush peach mm -hmm. and that one is another one that's been requested for a number of years and, and it's, it's peach colored so it's really cute yeah and sugar gives you a tint, hint, hint that it's like sweet but it's it's plenty hot too yeah. <laughs> it's plenty hot too <laughs> it's, it's plenty hot it's it's i'd say twice the heat of the the amarillo which is twice the heat of some of the others that we've looked yeah, at yeah so we've, we've jumped an energy level sugar rush peach is going to be 50 to 100,000 scoville units but it's really pretty it's going to have like it's apricot colors do we have apricot flavors so there, there, there's you know, a little bit of apricot flavor little, little peachy citrusy, flavor yeah. so there's 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 some high interest in that one because of yeah i like the i like the the fruitiness of the ahis. 
I like that. Yeah. So circling back to the you know the, the group that we've already talked about some cayenne uh, again the cayennes go from fairly mild to a little bit more heat and we've got golden cayenne if you like the yellow the pretty yellow ones uh, golden cayenne is one that we've we've had for a number of years. Yeah. Yeah, I I really like it. It grows really well. It's really pretty. It's relatively very pretty. I'm gonna say it's not late for me when I'm trying no, to ripen it's, it's, them. No, it's it's definitely an earlier of the um, of the cayennes for us, but uh, you know, commonly used in Creole and Cajun cuisine. So um, southwestern. I mean, it, it, yeah, it is not bad. It's yeah. not hard. I mean, don't eat it straight out of hand. But <laughs> as a seasoning pepper, it's it's fantastic. Yep. And the same with the hot Thai pepper. We, we grow that one too. It's tiny but mighty. Um, again, 50 to 100,000 Scoville units and they pack it into these tiny, these tiny little tiny one inch little long peppers at that point upwards. upwards yep. And uh, a lot of people like those. And so yeah, you can preserve these and like <laughs> make some spicy, fabulous food. Yeah. And another one that also Pokes upward is that we're bringing in this year, and I'm sure everybody's heard of it, the Tabasco. Oh, yeah, pepper. yeah. So this is my year to try new pepper things, and I'm like, All right, what are we going to do? We make my own hot sauce. And what is more classic than Tabasco? So we're going to grow some Tabasco peppers, and we'll make hot sauce with some of the others. I think Sugar Rush and some of these others will make fabulous hot sauce, too. Yeah. And then... So so now we get to the, uh, I call it the super hot. The stupid hot. Or the stupid hot ones, <laughs> yeah. ones that I... I, I laugh because I'm like, why in the world would anybody want to use these? Well, if you're really economical and you want to have like, you know, a little quarter inch by quarter inch portion of a pepper season, your <laughs> your, your your soup kitchen's chili, yeah, it's very economical because you can, uh, one, go, a little one, bit goes a long ways. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe let's start with the, 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 the lesser of the crazy super. So we hot. had we had the other habanero burning bush, which is the yellow, and that's or orange. It's, yeah, the orange one. It's, it's a lot less. It didn't make this page. And then the Caribbean red is kind of a classic red ha habanero. Haban habanero. Did I yep. say that right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and that's going to be, we were, where were we last? 50 to 100,000 Scoville units mm -hmm. for stuff that we're going to put in actual food. Um, <laughs> like, <laughs> so, so this one's, yeah, that 300 to 450,000. And, and we have people, we had a, a friend who we bought a bunch of these plants, planted them, and then pickled them all. And then, like that next winter, called us up and said, "Why in the world did you let me pickle all those? <laughs> I have no idea what I'm going to do with a bunch of <laughs> pints yeah. of flaming habanero <laughs> yeah. um, so, peppers." But um, uh, if, if you like the, the flavor of them and you like the heat, yeah, that, that's a classic one that a lot of people they do buy have. The habanero has that nice citrusy flavor. This one has kind of a smoky flavor that goes with it too. Um, once you get your taste buds back, you'll appreciate that, um, but a little goes a long way. But you can put yeah. it in like salsas or jellies or, or things like that, um, yeah. little bits of it. So, so there's good ways to use it. Another one that is similar heat, maybe not quite as hot as that one, but yellow scotch bonnet is one that we brought yeah, we, in. We jumped down like three, three yeah. units for that one. <laughs> That's only 100 to 350 Scoville units, and they're cute. They're yellow. They look like, they look like little, little hats. And um, yeah, commonly used to make Jamaican jerk seasonings, and so if you're if you love all things Caribbean, uh, you've most likely had a yellow Scotch yeah. bonnet. So they say it's smoky, fruity, and fiery, um, which are all good things. Um, and that one wouldn't be too hot to yeah. to use. Yeah, it's from there is where we really jump jump to the level. So ghost pepper is one that we've carried for several years. I always laugh at the description we've used. It was a 2007 Guinness. A world record for for hottest pepper that's been surpassed a couple times since then. And we were laughing. And we we're like, well, what would you use this for? And in mass and um, yeah, in India they actually use it to keep wild elephants at a distance. Probably not an issue here in Iowa. But, <laughs> I, like, but I have I have been known. I we tested this theory because we had rabbits in our backyard, and I was like, I'm tired of them <laughs> eating all the things, and so I planted all the dangerously hot peppers out in my garden and they did not eat those <laughs> yeah <laughs> so so that one's about a million scoville heat units and then we added just one more this year um just because we wanted to see if we could grow it and see what people thought so we are offering it but, uh, but you know the famous carolina reaper and it does not reported to have the fabulous citrus flavors that a habanero has it does not have all those cool flavor things 
Well, some people say it has kind of a chocolatey or cherry flavor to it. I, I, I laugh because I'm thinking, how in the world can you taste anything after, you know, 1.5 million <laughs> Scoville heat units? I'm not sure I can taste anything after yeah. that. So, but uh, but if you want to if you want to grow one and see if you can do it, too. And if you're if you're brave about the hot sauce, you can, you can grow you this can one, You can give too. that one a try. So that that is our list out of all of those. If you could only grow one pepper and I know that's like the oh, hardest question is... for you. If you could only grow one pepper, what, what do you think it would be? In middle school, they're like, what is your favorite thing? And I'm like, I, I can't pick my favorites. Um, I really like the ahis. The ahis, I think, are are fantastic. Um, and I can't pick just one. I would I would pick the Anaheim chilies, ahis, the Anaheims, and probably Golden Daddy and Big Daddy, because that one that yeah. is my favorite flavor one something really sweet but we'll see what would you grow what would i grow would oh that's grow? a hard one uh it's not <laughs> i i like the just sweet on the sweet pepper side yeah, if i was to just get one when on he's the out sweet in the garden snacking, he just eats those I out just, of the garden. yeah those don't usually make it in so uh, i really like the just sweet but i like all the other things i love making the paprika and all of our peppers um yeah, we we freeze Man, dry them. We we smoke them and dry them. We roast them and dry them. Um, there's so much you can do with the peppers, and yeah. there's such a variety of choices and uses and and heats. And I mean, yeah. So fortunately, we don't have to decide, which is a good thing because we're growing sixty two different. I know varieties we're, we're going to grow them all. So and, and, um... so you tell <laughs> us what you think. Um, we are missing or what is your favorite pepper put it down in the comments uh, if you like hearing what uh, what we're growing this year go ahead and hit your the like and subscribe it does help out and uh, if you got other comments or questions post them down below and we'll talk to you later yep bye-bye